Today, I'm going to show you how to, I'm a little nervous to say this, but how to mod your Nintendo Switch. So yeah, Nintendo's gonna take this video down in about a week, so watch it while you can and make sure to save it. But welcome to the updated guide on how to mod your Nintendo Switch. This tutorial is for any Switch running firmware 19.0, so if that's your Switch, feel free to watch and let's get started. I'm breaking this into different sections so you can skip through to go to the parts you need. Section 1 is everything you need to mod your Switch. Section 2 is how to mod your Switch. Section 3 is how to set up Atmosphere custom firmware. Section 4 is how to make an Emunand. And Section 5 is frequently asked questions. To not mod your Nintendo Switch, you will need an unpatched Switch. If you bought a new Switch after mid-2018, it's definitely patched, but to check, go to this website and enter your Switch's serial number. Unpatched means you're good to go and can continue with this guide. Potentially patched means you can try modding your Switch. Nothing bad will happen if it ends up being patched, but you won't be able to mod it. And patched means, well, you gotta click off the video. After leaving a like, of course. You will also need an RCM jig, a micro SD card with at least 64 gigabytes of space. If you aren't creating an Emunand, 30 32 gigabytes is fine, but the recommended size in general is 128 gigabytes and up. A micro SD card reader you can plug into your computer, a USB-C cable that supports data transfer to connect your switch to your computer, this software which is used to format your SD card, Tegra RCM GUI, Hakate, Atmosphere, and SIG patches. All of these are included in the folder I have linked in the Google Doc in the description. The first thing we're gonna do is format our SD card to FAT32. So turn off your switch, remove the SD card, and throw it at your computer. Put it in your SD card reader and connect it to your computer. So on your computer, you're going to extract the not modding pack because we're not modding our switch. We would never do such a thing. And then after that extracts, you're going to open the not modding pack and inside here is everything we need. If you have any screenshots on your SD card, make sure to go to your switch and then go to the Nintendo folder and drag this album folder to your desktop so you don't lose any of your images. So now you can open the guiformat.exe and then it should automatically know which one is your SD card, but make sure you have the right thing selected so you don't end up formatting your actual hard drive. You just have to make sure this number matches the size of your SD card so you know you have the right one selected. And then for you, this might be blank, so you could just name it anything you want, like like and sub. You don't have to mess with this. And before we click start, you wanna make sure that you don't have File Explorer open or you might get an error. So I'm gonna click the X on that, gonna make sure it's not open anywhere else. See, I had this folder open. Gonna click that. And now we can start. You will have to re-download all the games that you have installed, which is kind of annoying, but all your progress will be there. And there we go. Once it says done, you can close out of that. With that done, we're going to drag some of the files from the folder you downloaded to your SD card. So this part is pretty self-explanatory. I'm just dragging Atmosphere, Hakate, and Sig patches to the root of my SD card. I have the versions of each of these showing. So if you're watching this a year in the future and the Switch is on like firmware 20, you can still follow this guide, but make sure that you use the latest updates for the three of these. Now you can take your SD card out your computer, put it back in your switch, and slide your RCM jig on the right Joy-Con rail. We're then going to open Tegra RCM, go to settings, and click install driver. If this window doesn't pop up, reopen Tegra RCM and try installing the drivers again. What I'm about to do is what you have to do every time you want to boot into Hakate to run Atmosphere. Atmosphere is the name of the custom firmware we're installing, and Hakate is the name of the bootloader which is used to boot into Atmosphere or even Linux and Android if you want to learn how to get those after watching this guy. Right now, you can plug your USB-C cable into your computer but not your Switch. And on your Switch, hold down volume up and the power button. And while doing that, plug the other end of your USB cable into your Switch. And on your computer, Tegra RCM should say RCM OK. And after that, you can let go of the power and volume buttons. And in Tegra RCM, go to the payload tab and click this file icon. Here we select Hakate because that's what we want our Switch to boot into. What you can do is move the Hakate from the modding pack somewhere on your computer where it won't be deleted and then select it. And when you click inject payload, you should see Hakate on your switch. If you get this code after injecting, it unfortunately means your switch is patched and you can't continue from here. But if you get this code and still don't see Hakate, disconnect your switch, turn it on and off again, and try redoing the RCM jig process but with a different USB cable. And now that we're in Hakate, it's time to set up Atmosphere. So now that you're inside Hakate, it's perfectly fine to unplug the USB-C cable and take off the RCM jig if you want to. And what we're gonna do is add something called a boot entry so we can launch into Atmosphere. So right now, if I were to click launch, it would say no main boot entries found. So that's what we need to change. To do this, I'm going to click close and then go to tools, USB tools, and SD card. And now if I plug the USB-C cable into my switch, I'll be able to access my SD card on my computer. So inside the modded pack, I already have a Hakate IPL 
that has the boot entry set up but if you're interested in what it looks like all you have to do is right click it and then go to edit in notepad and all it is is just giving Hakate different things to boot into so what you can do with this is go to your SD card go to bootloader and then we're going to replace this Hakate with the one in the modding pack so I'm just going to drag it over and then replace and now that that's done I can go down here click this arrow and then eject my SD card and now on your screen wait for the close button to show up click close and now you can safely unplug it and Emunand is a recreation of your Nintendo Switch's internal and you want to go back into Hakate. If you're in Atmosphere right now, you can just restart your Switch, go to Tools, Partition SD Card, drag the Emunand slider to 29 gigabytes, press Next Step, read the prompt, and wait for it to finish. If this is your first time modding your Switch, you don't have to worry about it saying it's going to delete everything, but if you've modded your Switch before and you have some modding things you don't want deleted, make sure you back those up first. After that, go to Home, Emu MMC, Create Emu MMC, and choose SD Partition. This this part takes about 15 minutes, but after it finishes, we can set up Exosphere which prevents your Emunan from connecting to Nintendo servers. To do this, get your USB-C cable again, go to Tools, USB Tools, SD Card, and plug your Switch into your computer. Feel free to do this whenever you want to put things on your SD card. And no, I didn't forget about your album folder, so you can add that back now. Also drag everything in the Drag After folder from the modding pack, which includes things that might have got deleted after partitioning your SD card. This folder also includes Exosphere and requires no further setup. So now you you can safely eject your SD card, click close, and unplug your switch. To launch Atmosphere, go to Home, Launch, and choose between Emunan, Sysnan, or Stock Switch. And now you officially have a modded Nintendo Switch. That wasn't too hard, right? My Emunand won't let me reinstall my games! Because the Emunand is separated from your system NAND and doesn't connect to Nintendo servers, you'll need to look up a different way to install games on your Emunand. What's the difference between Stock and SysNAND? Stock Switch refers to the Switch not running Atmosphere. If you fully turn off your Switch and turn it back on, you will be inside your Stock Switch that has no custom firmware. SysNAND is the Switch running Atmosphere that has access to your Nintendo Switch's NAND, which is why games installed on your Stock Switch show up on your SysNAND and you're still able to play games online. I got this error. If you get this error, download Atmosphere and Fuzzy.bin from its GitHub, drag the extracted zip to your SD card, and replace Fuzzy.bin inside the Atmosphere payloads folder with the new one. But what about this error? In Hakate, go to Tools, Archbit, select Fix Archive Bit, and then try launching your Emunand or Sysnand again. I opened, insert random app name, and it crashed. <gasps> try opening the homebrew menu outside of applet mode. To do this, hold down R while opening a game. Also another tip, to view your screenshot slash videos, hold down R while opening the album. Can I use game mods in SysNand? Yes, but make sure they're online safe. Reboot the payload doesn't work! I had a fix for this, but the fix didn't work, so just restart your Switch instead to go to Akate. Can I install free games to my SysNand? If you know what I mean by free, no. no. Only in your Emunand. Why haven't I liked the video? Good question, you tell me! I hope this guide helped you mod your Nintendo Switch, and if it did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more modding content. Bye!